Did you know you live in a watershed? A watershed is a large area where the water from rain, melting snow, springs, and streams flows downhill into one river. The water that flows through a watershed is fresh water, the kind living things need to stay alive. You may think there will always be plenty of fresh water. Thanks to the water cycle, water never gets used up, right? But that's only true if the water stays clean. When people add poisonous chemicals and sewage to water, it is no longer safe to drink. What happens when water upstream gets polluted? Let's use a model of a watershed to find out. We made this model from crumpled up paper covered with foil. Then we added sand and some little houses and trees. To represent pollution, we will use food coloring and baking soda. We will need a beaker to collect water samples and a PASCO pH sensor. The sensor will measure how acidic our water sample is. That's one way to tell if the water is polluted. First, we will pour clean water in at the top of our watershed. What do you predict the water will look like when it flows out at the bottom? I think the water will be super dirty. It will pick up dirt from the sand. We placed our collecting container under the lower end of the watershed. Now Jacob will slowly pour tap water into the high end. He will keep pouring until a water sample collects at the bottom. What does the water look like? The water is kind of cloudy. I can see some sand in it, but it still looks natural. Now we will pollute our watershed on purpose by adding baking soda and food coloring. Daniela is dripping food coloring in the sand all along the river. Wow, that's some serious pollution. Then she is digging a small hole in the sand, burying some baking soda. How do you think the water will look when it flows out of the watershed? I think the food coloring will color the water. We will measure the pH or acidity of the water after it flows through our watershed. Baking soda can soak up or neutralize acid. We will know if baking soda washed into the water because it will make the water less acidic. What do you think will happen to the pH of the water? I don't think the pH will change much. The baking soda is buried, so it probably won't get into the water. Jacob has emptied and rinsed the collecting container, and we are ready to test our theory. He is placing the pH sensor in the container. Then Daniela pours clean water into our watershed so we can collect a sample. Let's watch the data from the pH sensor as the water flows out. When the water has drained out, we will stop recording data. Here's our graph showing the pH of the water. What did the water look like when it drained out of the watershed? The water picked up a lot of food coloring. It came up pretty dark. Could you detect baking soda pollution in the water? Yes. The water started out with a pH of about 7. That's neutral on the pH scale. But then the pH rose to about 7.5. That means baking soda washed into the water. How did the water that flowed out of the watershed compare to the water you poured in at the top? The water poured in at the top was okay to drink because it came from the tap, but I wouldn't want to drink the water that came from the watershed. I didn't expect the water to pick up so much pollution. I was surprised by how much the pH changed because the baking soda was buried. I guess water can pick up even pollution that is underground. Yes, that's right. That means people who share a watershed and get their water from the same river need to cooperate. If they let pollution get into the watershed, they are ruining the water for all the other people and the plants and animals that depend on the watershed.